Section 3.2, Introduction to Functions. Our first objective is define a function, relation, domain, and range. Simple definition, a function has no repeating x values. So if you see two of the same x's, it's not a function. A set of ordered pairs is also called a relation. So when you have multiple amounts of ordered pairs, that's also called a relation. The domain of the relation is the set of x-coordinates, so that's your first coordinate of the ordered pair. The range of the relation is the set of y-coordinates, that's the second coordinate or component of the ordered pair. Example 1. Determine whether the following relations represent functions. State the domain and range. So for a, we have 4, 9, negative 4, 9, 2, 3, 10, and negative 5. So the first thing we want to look at is our x values to determine is this a function. You see we have no repeating x values. y does not matter. So if you have no repeating x values, it is a function. Now we want to state the domain and range. So the domain is all your x values, the range is all your y values. So domain, you don't have to put it in numerical order. Um, I was never told you have to, so I doubt you really have to. It doesn't matter. So we have 4, negative 4, 2, and 10. And then for the range, we want to list all the y values. So you see how we have 9 and 9? You never repeat things in math. So 9 and 9 is just 1 9 because they have the same value, 3 and negative 5. And there we go. We have domain range and stated if it's a function or not. Now for B, we're not going to state the domain and range. There's a lot to write here. But let's just see, is this actually a function? So do any of the x values repeat? No, they're all different. Now let's see, do any of, do we have two lines going to the same x? No, we don't. Doesn't matter about the y, so yes, b is a function. Now objective two, we want to identify functions from their graphs. So we do a thing called the vertical line test. If you can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph so that it hits the graph in more than one spot, then it's not a function. So basically, if you draw a vertical line and there's two points on that line, it's not a function. So for A, the vertical line test, what matters right here, these two values, you see how they both share the same three? not a function. Now for B, you necessarily don't need to do the vertical line test, you just need to see are there any x values on top of each other? Do we have two x values that are the same? So for B, if we look at our x values, none of them are on top of each other. None of them are the same. So yes, it's a function. C is a line. All lines are functions. And D, we have a circle. A circle is not a function, and you can just see all of these x values on top of each other. Objective 3, find the domain and range of a function. So remember, just domain is all your x values, range all your y values. So for example 3, we want to find the domain and range, and we're going to use interval notation. Right, That was from section 2, that was from chapter 2. So we have domain, our x values, and range, our y values. So let's figure out where does x begin and end. These arrows right here states that this graph goes on forever. So if it goes on forever, that means we can have any x value to the right and to the left. So if we keep drawing our graph, we can still have x and a million. So the domain is all real numbers. Now to write that in interval notation, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, 
Now, where does y start and stop? So here, if you notice down here, there's no y's. y starts at negative 1, and it goes infinitely. You see how these lines keep going? They're going to keep going on forever and ever and ever. So that means it's negative 1 to positive infinity. Objective 4. Use function notation. So function notation is f of x. That's the same thing as y. x is your input, that's your independent variable, and y is your output, that's your dependent variable. x is input because you usually put in x and you get a y. So f of x is the same thing as g of x, same thing as r of h, same thing as h of t, same thing as blank of blank, and that all equals y. So for example 4, we want to evaluate f of x equals 4x plus 1, and g of h equals h squared minus h. So we want to do f of negative 3 and g of negative 2. So we have f of x equals 4x plus 1, and we want to find f of negative 3. So you see how it's f of negative 3? That's the same thing as f of x. So the x becomes negative 3. So we have f of negative 3 equals 4 times negative 3 plus 1. So now we'll just work it out. Forget about the left side. We have 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 1. We get negative 11. So f of negative 3 equals negative 11. Now we have g of h equals, equals h squared minus h, and we want to find g of negative 2. So that means we're going to replace negative 2 for every h we see. So we have g of negative 2 equals negative 2 squared minus negative 2. So we have negative 2 squared is 4, and the minus minus become plus. So we have 4 plus 2, which is 6. So g of negative 2 equals 6.